A context-free grammar could have many different types of production rules. We might try to eliminate lambda productions and unit productions, but we might still have rules that produce several variables, or several terminals, or any mix of terminals and variables. However, one particularly useful form is known as the Chomsky normal form. A context-free grammar is in Chomsky normal form if every production rule either replaces a variable with exactly two variables or replaces a variable with exactly one terminal. And note this automatically excludes lambda productions and unit productions. So, for example, let's try to get a language into Chomsky normal form. So first, we'll eliminate any lambda productions. There aren't any, but if there were, we'd know how to eliminate them. Next, we'll eliminate the unit productions. There aren't any, but if there were, we'd know how to eliminate them. Now, to get this grammar into Chomsky normal form, we'll want to rewrite the production rules that aren't of the form a variable produces two variables or a variable produces a terminal. First, let's consider this rule b produces bc, that's a terminal followed by a variable. And the key is we want to introduce additional rules so that together we have b produces bc. So one possibility is, and this requires us to introduce two new rules. First, b produces xc, where x is a new variable, and then we have to figure out what to do with x. Well, x produces b, which is our terminal. Now you might notice we already had the rule c produces b. So did we really need to introduce this new variable x? Could we have used b produce cc instead? And the answer is no. In this case, notice that it's impossible to derive a string beginning with c. But if we had the rule b produces cc, we could obtain one. And so the rule b produces cc would actually produce a different language. And in general, if there's more than one possible production from a variable, reusing it may introduce additional strings not in the original language. Now by a similar argument, a to bb can be replaced with a produces yb produces bb with the new rules a produces yb and y produces b. This time, notice the only production from x is x produces b. And because this is the only production, we could recycle this rule. And so this gives us a produces xb produces bb, and only requires introducing the rule a produces xb. Now, it's worth noting that we could have introduced a new variable if we wanted. So we'll expand our rules to include these. Then we can eliminate the productions A produces B, B, and B produces B, C. What about S produces A, 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 A? We could produce this as S produces C, A produces triple A, A, which has new rules S produces Z, A, which is in Chomsky normal form, and Z produces A, 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 which is not. But we can produce that using z produces, say, wv, which produces aaa, which requires the new rules. And again, v produces aa is not in Chomsky normal form, but we can produce it by v produces ww and we can use w here because w produces a as the only production rule from a, so we can recycle this variable. And so adding our new rules and eliminating the rules they replace give us our grammar in Chomsky normal form. 
So why would we go to all this effort? We'll take a look at that next.